All right, what's going on everybody? Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I have with me here a package. This is from Cheryl Tree. Um, I hope I know what's in it. We'll find out. So let's get into it. All right, so this is what I had hoped it was. This is the Tufelberger Adrenal Line. Um, I recently wore out my Yale Scandier and decided to mix it up, try something a little bit different. So I landed on this one after doing a minimal amount of research. And I'm excited to see what it's like. So first impressions, it seems to grip really well. Um, I'm interested to see how much it milks and flattens because it feels really malleable. It's not, it's not rock solid, but I like the size. It's not, it's not an 11, but it's not quite a half inch. It's somewhere in between, which I gotta have. I can't have an 11 because my hands are so big. I gotta have something a little bit bigger. So they call this 11.8, which is what I typically use. It's just big enough where I can hold it, but not too big. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is how we chain a rope. Um, this makes it great for storage. We've never had a problem with chain ropes getting tangled up with other chained ropes or with themselves. They always come out great. Um, we've been fine tuning this method for technically 30 years now that dad's been in the business with ropes. So uh, we definitely like to think ours is the best way. So you're gonna start with the two ends of the rope. And the rest of the rope is just out here in the yard. We finish using it, whatever. All you need is the two ends. So you're gonna take the two ends in your left hand and let them hang about this much. And you're gonna grab the rest of the rope in your right hand. So I'm holding both of them at the same time. So you take this and you wrap it away from your body to make a loop. And then you put it back up through that loop, just like that. And it's gonna make a little bit of a slip knot and you can kind of cinch that down right there. And then now you got a loop. So you just start chaining from there. So you put it through and through and through. Now, the bigger you make your chains, the sloppier it's going to become. So we recommend fairly small, but not too small. So I'm six foot four. If that gives you reference for how big the chains are. We make them fairly small because they get tangled a lot less often when they're small. So now you just keep chaining, keep chaining. You get really fast at it over time. And when you get to the end, all you do is you take that tail and you stick it through the last chain and pull it down tight. So then when you get ready to open it back up, all you have to do is pull that little tail out and then bam, the whole rope just falls right out. It's perfect. It works every time. So to chain it, that last part back up, get it like that, put that end over. Now you can take it and I just walk it up something like this, toss it over your shoulder, and you can carry it right back to the truck. Good to go. Throw it in the box, just cram all your ropes in there on top of each other, and it works perfectly every time. Never a tank. Okay, so for the last part of this video, we're gonna be doing a full rundown of the gear that I use regularly for climbing um, for our family business. This is a combination of modern stuff that I've been learning about and the old ways, which came from my dad who's been in the business for 30 years. So it's a, it's a strange, strange put together. Um, my biggest, fundamental rule is I travel light. So um, I actually just got this bag, but one of the things I'm really excited about is I can clip everything inside of it and I don't have to have it hanging on my saddle just for the purpose of not losing it. In the past, I have clipped so many little gadgets and things to the back of my saddle just for the sole purpose of I don't want to lose these because sometimes those little trinkets get misplaced and then you can't find them. So 
now that I have something to put it in, which I got this bag on a promo code, um, I would never spend this much on a bag, just to throw that out there. But I got it free with a promo code, so I was really stoked about it. But um, we'll start over here on this side. I have just a simple rope lanyard right here. This is this is a dual action snap. Um, I'm pretty confident that this is not approved anymore because it only has two actions instead of being triact. So sometimes I still climb on it because it's worked for a long time now and it's never failed. Um, I use the Rock Exotica rope grab with the 90 degree pivot. I really like that 90 degree. It's super cool to be able to use. Um, we'll skip the hand saw because this is not my primary. This is a backup Silky Zubot. Um, so as far as my gadgets, rarely do I carry all of these in a tree. Um, this is just a friction hitch setup. I have one of those. I have one accessory. I have a 50 newton, 50 kilonewton steel carabiner. This is a triple, triple locking. It has three-way triact. Um, I have this D-ring that I don't use. It's uh, got a, a pocket wedge, which is mostly just for show. I've never actually used one in the tree. My big thing about that is, if you need a pocket wedge, you need to go back to saw school. Um, one of my big fundamentals is you got to know how to use a saw before you can climb a tree. Anybody can monkey up a rope, but using a saw is another, another game in and of itself. Um, I have a good old figure eight. Somebody told me that this box shaped one doesn't spiral your rope up. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. Cause I hate it when your rope gets twisted, but it's a gimmick. It doesn't work. Um, and beyond that, I have one speed line choker. It's just a round choker sling on a triact aluminum carabiner. And I can use that as a redirect. I can use it as um, a speed line choker. I usually switch it to the steel carabiner if I do that. But I only have one. You don't need a bunch of these. Just one's enough. Great. The next piece of equipment is my adrenaline rope, which I have never used. I just got it today, as you saw earlier. Um, I have the zigzag threaded all the way to the end. That's how I store it. It's ready to go. I just pull it out, shoot it up in a tree. Or if I'm spiking, you know, I just clip it on like it is. I don't even have to, to worry about it. But I only have one rope because most trees around here are all the same size. I can, I can do any tree in the triangle with a 150 foot rope. I've never needed a longer one. Um, I probably should have had a longer one a couple times, but if you're if you're smart with it, you can use 150 foot rope in the in the triangle area, and it's a plenty. Um, the next thing would be my saddle. This is a Tufelberg Tree Motion. I have had it, I believe, six years at this point. I'm not positive on that but it's just the, it's the standard. If I got another one, I would definitely get the light. I'm all about lighter stuff. Uh, less weight means I'm faster, which is a big deal. On the back, here's my Zubot. Um, I mounted it the same way. I think I got the idea from Strider Trees. If you haven't seen his channel, he's got some, some interesting stuff. Uh, I carry my med kit back here. Um, there's a, a tourniquet and the blood stopper, whatever it is that came with it. I added a tourniquet, which I recommend. Um, and then on this side, I have, uh, it's a, the CMI shim beaner. I don't know if you can see it. It's just a hook, it's open, but I wanna tell you right now, a gate is not necessary. There is absolutely no need to have a gate on your transporter. Um, that particular one is where I clip my chainsaw. And there's, I've never had it come off. Um, I do a lot of swinging. 
crazy upside down stuff and that sort of thing. And if you look at it, you can't see it because the saw here. There's this little tab right here on the bottom. So if you go upside down, that ring on my chainsaw lanyard is going to catch right there. And it has never come off. And I don't anticipate it ever coming off. So the perks of not having a gate is I can grab my chainsaw without even looking where I'm grabbing with one hand easily. Um, I've seen guys that can, that can open a gate with one hand and grab the ring, but it's one extra step that is completely unnecessary. So if you haven't tried one with no gate, I definitely recommend it. Um, some of you guys out there are gonna say, oh, well, why do you need a, a special hook? Why can't you just smash a gate off a carabiner? And I'll tell you, I've done that for a lot of years. That's why this webbing right here is so smashed up. I had a carabiner just, just threaded in there because that's what my dad told me. He's like, you don't need a special tool for that. Well, I saw this, I think it was like 20 bucks when I got it, which is, it's gone up by now, I'm pretty sure. But the way it fits in this webbing, it stays perfectly outright from my saddle. So instead of like flopping down flat and making me have to pull it back out to hang my chainsaw, it's always sticking straight out. So I can put the chainsaw on and off without even looking at it. I know exactly where it is and its position never changes. So really like that piece of gear and highly recommend it. Okay. Next piece of gear, these are my new aluminum climbers. These are also brand new, have never been used. We have another pair that we've been using for, I don't even know how long. My dad was using them since I was at least eight years old. So that's 12 years that we've had those. And I've climbed on them forever. But these are like four pounds, they're aluminum. I'm not quite affluent enough to upgrade the carbon fiber. But like I said earlier, anything to save weight is great. The reason that I have these is because they're a third the price of the carbon fibers. So definitely went with the aluminum. The next piece in this little pocket right here, I keep my stationary rope system equipment. Um, my Haas knee ascender. I have a carabiner on the bottom because I use a, a clip on foot loop. So it's very easy to attach and unattach with that foot loop. I'll show it to you. I'm gonna go ahead and get it out. Um, right here is my foot loop. So as you can see, this carabiner just clips on it really easily. This slips around your left foot and you can hook this Haas straight into that. It's super easy, unbelievably quick to attach and unattach. And while we're at it, here's my right foot, foot ascender. I mean, there's nothing special about it. It's just a camp turbo foot. Um, I also have the CT. I saw some guys recommending these. I love how this gate latches. When you're using the Haas, you have to latch the gate. There's no way around it. Otherwise you'll kick out of your rope. So I would recommend the CT if you guys are in the market for one. Um, what was the other thing we were on? Okay. Chicane. I have a chicane. Um, I don't use it a ton. The times when I use it are when I'm going straight up quickly. I have one or two things to do while I'm coming in a straight line, straight back down. Um, guys talk all the time. They're like, oh, single rope is, is great for rope walking, I mean, limb walking, that kind of thing. I hate using it for limb walking because I have to reach up there and I have to turn this thing down and depress my zigzag with one hand while I'm rope walking. And that to me is such a pain in the butt. I, I don't know why people think it's so easy. It's, it's not. So my chicane I use to go straight up and straight down. That's it. Because it is really easy to just shoot a rope over tie it at the base and go up one side then you don't have to worry about isolating your climb line for a moving rope system that's something i really like um, by the way all the stationary moving rope you guys are welcome 
to debate with me in the comments um, your preferences on stationary and moving rope. Um, if I'm going to be up in a tree for a while, I always switch to moving rope because for me, it's a lot faster, a lot smoother. I can limb walk really fast and I can also go back to the main trunk from a limb walk really fast. I don't have to have an extra pulley up at the top. That's more weight on my saddle. And I don't, I don't want more weight for something that I can do really easily with a moving rope system. So, yeah, you guys are welcome to to debate with me about moving rope versus stationary. I admit I'm not up to date on all the latest stuff. So, um, I welcome your feedback. If you want to point me to something newer and improved. I, I love learning about new systems. I get kind of geeked out about some of it, but um, yeah, let me know in the comments what your preferences are for stationary versus moving when you use it. The last thing that I have is a chainsaw lanyard. There's nothing special about it. Supposedly right here it breaks away. Um, I've yanked on it pretty hard before and it has not broken but I use a carabiner straight to my saw, to the ring, and then I hook this on the back ring on my saddle. And this ring goes right in the little hook. You see the hook right here? Ring goes right like that, the saw hangs right there. So it slips on, it slips off, no problem. So that's it for my climbing setup. You guys have seen it all. It all fits in this bag, including my Protos helmet. Um, I definitely recommend these for all you guys out there that have not tried one. Um, I have the Bluetooth in mine. We use them. We've used them for, I don't know. I mean, it's been like four years now that we've had them. And absolutely love them you can have a normal tone of voice conversation with your employees standing right beside the chipper it's unbelievable so i hope you enjoyed the video um, that's my full climbing setup these are all the things that i use regularly and like i say if i'm going up to do just a crane removal all i need is my rope my lanyard some spikes and that's it i mean there's no need to take more gear when you don't need it. I'll also add that in the, in the chip truck, we have a cable lanyard. And if you haven't tried a cable lanyard on spikes, it's, it's really nice, especially when we do pine tree removals and that sort of thing. We, I always use the cable lanyard. So I just, have, I just don't have it in here. But if I'm doing a crane removal or a pine tree removal, sitting on the spikes, I always have that cable because it's so nice, nice and stiff to flip. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about any gear that I use or what I do in certain situations. Um, I'd be happy to share tips that I developed or that my dad's developed over his 30 years of experience. If you're looking for tips and tricks, my advice to you may not be something along the lines of a really complex rigging scenario. Um, I'm not going to tell you on a leaning tree, you need to set three climbing ropes or something like that. Um, my answer might be a little harsh to some, but it's mostly going to be learn your chainsaw, learn how to use a chainsaw, one, so you don't pinch it, but two, so you can get limbs to fall exactly like you want them to. And that takes practice. You got to put in the practice and put in the work to get good with the chainsaw. Um, the other thing is, be a little more athletic in the tree. Um, practice your balance skills. People don't practice balance near enough. You have to be very good at balancing to work on a pole with a single rope and a lanyard. And you might fall a couple times while you're practicing, but if you've got your lanyard and your rope in the right spot, then you should be fine. It just might be awkward for a couple seconds while you scramble back up where you're supposed to be. So. My types of advice are gonna be learn your chainsaw and learn how to balance really well. That's what's gonna make you faster and it's gonna make you lighter because you're not gonna be carrying 
near as much gear. So that's my advice for all of you who are, are getting into the sport. I call it a sport. Um, I like to look at it that way. I played a lot of sports in high school and this is just a way for me to, to make money and to keep playing sports. So I love it. Um, that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.